Hi everyone, Derek Johnson with Tatango.com. I'm here at Innovista Law, the home of the TCPA Defense Force. I'm speaking with TCPA attorney David Carter. Now, one of the issues, I guess, with the TCPA is employees should know, I guess, about the TCPA, but to what extent should they know about the TCPA and why? Sure. So from our perspective, we've been encouraging our clients and others to uh, train those frontline employees, the people that in our interact daily with your customers. Okay. So in store, on the phone, maybe in like web chat? Sure. The, okay. The, the people that, yeah, anyone that has a direct relationship with the customers. Okay we believe should have some awareness of the TCPA right now. And that comes from a 2015 decision by the Federal Communications Commission, which said that a consumer who has opted in to receive text messages yep. has to be able to opt out of receiving future text messages in any reasonable manner. Okay, and so our software, sure. we when people text in stop or unsubscribe, it automatically removes them or unsubscribes them from the list. Right. You're saying that it doesn't stop there. That's right. Under the current rules as adopted by the Federal Communications Commission, they've extended this requirement uh, to honor all opt-outs made in a reasonable manner without then defining, of course, the natural question, which is what's a reasonable manner. Okay. And so it could be more than just replying <clears throat> stop. It, it, it likely is. Okay. And so this is an issue where Courts will probably have to interpret this. We might see uh, there is, in fact, a challenge to this requirement right now that's still pending in federal court. Uh, and so it's an area that's going to continue to evolve. Okay. And so what we've tried to help companies understand is that it's to their advantage to not have a full-blown training program for frontline employees, but at least to have some exposure for them to the Telephone Consumer Protection Act and to help raise their awareness so that if you're checking out someone and someone happens to say, hey, I really don't want to receive text messages for you, from you guys anymore, yeah. that the customer can think to themselves, oh, okay, I at least understand that that's something I should care about yeah. and I should help this consumer to, uh, the to employee, get off the list. The employee that is taking in that info from the customer. Right, should, okay. should then act on it, right? Okay. It should help the consumer you know, find a manager, help them, go through the opt-out process if they're going to use the text opt-out mechanisms okay. or something, but do something to help that consumer. So just say, sorry, I don't know what you're talking about is not a valid uh, opt-out or not a valid way to respond to a customer. Yeah, it's, it's definitely the, the issue is, is like if you, if you have these employees and they're not aware of the TCPA requirements and therefore they don't help the consumer, yep. then you're much more likely to have an a, an angry consumer, which yeah, is never not, want that. not great for yeah. business, but, but beyond that, you're much more likely than to have a consumer that says, hey, look, I um, tried. tried and yep. you didn't help me and I think you should have helped me. And again, as, as we like to say, is there, you don't want to be the test case, right? Yep. You don't want to be the one that has to go through the litigation process and test whether or not you needed to have consumers prepared. Okay. We've uh, helped to make this easy for, for our customers and others that are doing text messaging. Uh, we've developed a very short animated like 10 minute video that can be played on, through the, like a web platform. Oh, like a training video. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So For employees. For employees. Okay. So it's very geared towards those, again, those frontline employees. We try to take something that, as you know, the Telephone Consumer Protection Act can be pretty complex. Very complex. And we try to boil that down okay. into, the, into the basics, help, again, raise awareness and help an employee understand as part of my job of working for this company and working to protect this brand that I care about, one of the things I need to do is be aware when consumer says, hey, I want to okay. stop getting my text messages from you guys. But it's not like the employees need to study the Telephone Consumer Protection Act. Essentially, <laughs> they might not even need to know what the TCPA is. It's that you have to honor opt-out requests by law because yes. the TCPA is law. Right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, right. You're not going to train them to the same level that you would train the compliance team, okay, marketing or the legal team, maybe. team. Yep. exactly. Okay. You don't need to train them to that level. They yep. don't need to know all the nuts <laughs> and bolts, right? What they need to be aware of is, hey, look, like consumers have a right to stop receiving messages if they don't want to get them anymore. And when someone asks me to help them with that, I should figure out a way to help them. And, and usually, we encourage companies to couple that up. Of course, here's the 10 minute training video, yep. and here's the three things in our the ways that you can help. Here's very specific how to opt them out. Correct. Whether that's helping the customer. Maybe Calling they have a, number. a website that they can type in the customer's phone number. Right. So they're all different kinds of ways. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So it's it's really just that that 
awareness raising part yep. of helping to make sure that your employees out there on the front lines are helping to insulate the company from this risk. Because the punishments of violating the Telephone Consumer Protection Act are pretty great, right? Yeah, they're pretty severe. So you're talking about um, five hundred dollars per message. Okay. Uh, if there's if you're sending unauthorized messages, and so what the FCC has made clear is once someone's expressed their desire to opt out, even to an employee. Yep. That's the gray area. Yep. So, yep. but once they've made it clear that yep. they don't want to receive your messages anymore, and you continue to send messages past that point in time then every single one of those messages could be subject to $500 okay. liability. Potential that it goes up to $1,500 wow. um, if they can show that it was a willful violation. And this is really the, the, the other part about why the training is so important. Um, if you're a large company and you have stores across the country, for example, you may not get every single employee to understand and appreciate yeah. that they have to take this, right? That's yeah. a huge task. Yeah. But if you can show that as a company, you have been diligent in training your employees and providing them with information and helping to train them, it, it provides a layer of protection that even if you were to have an, uh, one instance yep. where someone said, oh, you didn't honor my opt-out request, you've taken appropriate measures and you should be able to insulate yourself from that triple damage is the $1,500, okay. right? And so as you're doing the training, it's really important that you're tracking the people that are taking the training so you can show a court if this becomes an issue look we did everything we possibly could yeah, right yeah uh, humans anytime you have human involvement there's always an area for failure <laughs> yeah. but can you show as a company that you've been really uh, proactive and diligent in helping to educate your employees do the right thing for consumers it's good business frankly i mean like, yeah. like it's good for your customers to feel as like people care about the, their concern and that the, your employees are there to help take care of it. But it's also good because you don't want to spend that money on litigation and defending yourself in, in That's court. expensive. Just so. one person receiving a text message after they've asked maybe an employee, you know, hey, stop text messaging me $500 right. or $1,500, depending on kind of the circumstances. And every single text message after that, another $500. It's so it keeps it growing significantly. That's okay. right. That's right. So, so we think this is a pretty light uh, expense for yep. to kind of get some training out there and on the front end, and help to avoid those situations down the road. Interesting. So, essentially, first though, get the consent. That's always the key. Always number one. Yep. Yeah. Number two is make sure the software is you know replying stop and you know unsubscribing them. Sure. So the software does its job. And that makes it that takes care of the vast majority, majority. of the issues. But issues now there's it. this thing, and that was when did that come out? 2015. 2015. So recently, because yes, yep. the TCPA is ever evolving, uh, so you always got to stay on sure. it. It came out, and now you have to now it's not it's not the law yet or is it still it's just not clarified yet so it's definitely it has been in effect since 2015 okay. this reasonable opt out language okay. has been in effect since 2015 what's happened is that there is an appeal to that fcc uh, order okay and that appeal remains pending cuz it was very generic right that was the, that's the problem correct and the, the question is is that the that they're asking the courts is, is it so generic okay that it's subject to so many interpretations that as a company, like trying to do text message marketing and reach and my consumers, right. and they trying, want to do yeah, it right. You want to comply, right? <laughs> yeah. Like that's that's the that is the biggest challenge, okay. right? So if you're a company, you want to do it right, but you don't know what right is. Is right like if a consumer stands outside your store and yells it, <laughs> you know, I guess there are just so many different ways. So the clarification will help. Correct. But and at this point, if a customer wants to opt out, you got to try to get them out. Yeah, I think that you you have to be mindful mm -hmm. that there are a series of professional plaintiffs and professional plaintiff's attorneys okay. that are thinking of ways to create cases. These are people that are doing it on purpose almost, or some of them. Yeah, so the, there's uh, there's a lot of good people that are not doing it on purpose, that yep. really do have a problem. They don't, they, you know, they try to address They try to get out and they, they can't get they out. They can't. But you have a class of people and plaintiff's attorneys that are really generating these cases okay. and they're doing it intentionally. So they're testing the holes <laughs> in the brand essentially by they know they can reply stop, sure. But instead, they're walking into a store, finding the newest employee, and asking and them. asking them, and probably filming it. So okay. That they have, interesting. You know, interesting. So you've got to be prepared. Okay. And you've got to think 
like the plaintiff's attorneys that are thinking, how can I generate cases? And then you've got to create the, these defense mechanisms to help eliminate you being the test case, right? And, and they target, you know, this is the sad part about the landscape right now, right? They target brands that are doing the right thing. They're trying to do the right thing. But they also know that those are the brands that have um, the money. Yeah, large have, pockets. They have large yep. pockets. And so they're out there trying to think of ways to create cases. Hmm. And, and we think that uh, you know, this is an area where if you're not kind of on your toes and sort of thinking proactively and looking at it from the perspective of, of the plaintiff's side, yeah. that you're going to find more and more of these types of cases unless and until the rules change again or the courts strike down this requirement. Or clarif clarify you know, specifically how it can be done. Exactly. Okay. And, and one more point that I think is, is so critical to, to bring into that discussion is before 2015, you also had the option of sort of clarifying in your terms of service. Uh, okay. When people opted in to receive your messages, the ways in which they could get out. Oh, so, so you could put in your terms <laughs> and service you know, you have to come to my store and yell outside the store to opt out. That's the right. only or, way. Or more, more likely, you have to <laughs> text stop in. text. Yep. You know, you have to send the text message, and that's the ways in which the only I way. will yep. uh, I will honor the opt out okay. request. So the FCC, in a, when they made this shift, yep. right, and said you have to honor any reasonable opt out request, they also restricted your ability oh. to put into your terms of service. We only do opt outs in one or two. So ways. now you can't have that so it, again it's you can't say what specifically is the way but you have to accept every way almost right okay and so that makes that's really it's this combination of not being able to contractually guide people down a specific path yep. combined with the fact that they've left open this broad definition of reasonable opt-out request mm. which will still have to get flushed out over time and what does it really mean and how does it work in real life and that's the environment that we find ourselves in right now which is why uh, from our perspective we think that there is this pretty significant um, benefit to doing training yep. and kind of raising awareness among your employees so that they can be your eyes and ears on the ground and help yeah them. well it can be pretty expensive if uh, if yeah. there is a mistake right Absolutely. definitely something brands do not want <laughs> Well, again, my name is Derek Johnson with Tatango.com. I'm here at Invista Law at the TCPA Defense Force with TCPA attorney David Carter. We just talked about why it's important for employees to not only be trained on the TCPA, but also honor the opt-out requests from your consumers. Thanks for watching our video today. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up on YouTube. If you want to see more of these types of videos, be sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have comments or questions, please leave a uh, comment or question in the comment section below.